Alaska, 100 million years ago. A lone dinosaur roams the frozen plains. It looks just like a Tyrannosaurus, but it's covered head to toe in snow white feathers. This is Nanuxaurus, with a sharp sense of smell, a jaw that could bite through bone, and its tricky camouflage. The Nanuxaurus is the apex predator of the Arctic, but it's the dead of winter. It's dark and freezing. In the Arctic, even the deadliest hunters struggle to find prey. How did the dinosaurs here survive in such brutal conditions? For years, scientists didn't think it was possible for dinosaurs to live in a place as cold as the Arctic. But in 1960, paleontologists made a shocking discovery. They found fossils in Alaska that proved dinosaurs not only ventured up to the cold north, they lived and even thrived there too. In the Cretaceous period, Earth looked very different than it does today. The Bering Land Bridge meant moving to and from Asia to North America was possible. Alaskan summers were warmer on average, allowing life to take root, but the winters were just as dangerous as they are today. Freezing temperatures, barren land, and four whole months with no sun at all. Alaska back in the Cretaceous was no holiday but it didn't stop a rich ecosystem from developing in the Arctic. Scientists quickly realized that no cold-blooded dinosaur could have survived the brutal Arctic winters. Only warm-blooded animals and those capable to adapt could make the cut. Some of the first fossils they found belonged to herbivores, like Pachyrhinosaurus and Hadrosaurs. The Hadrosaurs closely related to Edmontosaurus roamed the Alaskan wilderness, scouring the earth for any kind of vegetation they could find. Conifers, ferns, horsetails that spring all year round were key parts of their diets during the winter months. Sometimes, when times got tough, they'd have to resort to eating rotten wood just to survive. These Hadrosaurs were like the caribou of their time. Then we have the Pachyrhinosaurus, the bison of the Cretaceous Arctic. With thick skin and massive horn heads they could use to fight off predators. Ceratopsians were sturdy and hard to kill, the perfect grazers in a land that chewed up the weak and spit them out. Like the Hadrosaurs, they also relied on evergreen vegetation to keep themselves going when the sun sets. Fossil sites containing over a hundred skeletons in one spot tell us that both herbivores made sure to stay in packs to maximize their chances of survival. Together, they could more easily protect their young and keep warm. But they weren't alone. Two predators came to dominate the Arctic landscape. One who hunted with raw power, the other with sharp intellect. First up, the fiercest and most dominant predator of the Cretaceous Arctic. The Nanuxaurus was closely related to the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. While it has its cousins, short arms, long tail, and similarly shaped skull, there were some big differences between the two dinosaurs. The most stark difference is the layer of white fur or small feathers that covered the Nanuxaurus. While the T-Rex may have had a thin layer of downy feathers, the Nanuxaurus's thicker coat served to make the beast hard to spot against the snowy background and also doubled as insulation against the cold. Not only that, but if you put the two side by side, you'll see that Nanuxaurus was much smaller. Its body was only around six meters long, half of the T-Rex. And while the super predator Tyrannosaurus could weigh at a staggering eight to 10 tons, Nanuxaurus only came in at 500 to 1,000 kilograms. Still a powerful predator, but definitely dwarfed by its cousin. This smaller size was a strength, however, not a weakness. The Cretaceous Arctic was a harsh, unforgiving place. Food was scarce, especially during the winter, and finding prey was considerably harder than in the warmer climates. The bigger you are, the more you have to eat. While the Nanuxaurus could keep itself going with fewer resources, a massive T-Rex would have quickly starved to death. Animals on resource-scarce islands are often smaller for the same reasons, leading to island dwarfism. You can think of Alaska as one giant island back in the Cretaceous period. If you want to survive, you need to be able to go a long time without food. In the warmer months, the Nanuxaurus might have found prey by tracking Pachyrhinosauruses. A pack of Pachyrhinosaurus was an impossible challenge to face head-on, even for the most fearsome predators. 
but the Nanuksaurus could have been able to band together in small groups and drive the group apart. Using their camouflage to sneak up on their prey, they could hunt down the pack, cause panic, and work together to bring down a single Pachyrhinosaurus that strayed too far from the rest. In the colder months, prey was much harder to find. Conditions were so harsh and bleak that many scientists assumed the dinosaurs during this time would migrate south to avoid the worst of the winter. But fossil discoveries show that dinosaurs like the Nanuxaurus stayed in the Arctic all year round, even laying their eggs and raising their young in the north. The research tells us that most of the dinosaurs at this time didn't migrate, but braved the harsh months. Some of the smaller Arctic inhabitants may have burrowed into the ground to hunker down and sleep through the colder months when there was no sun in the sky at all. Herbivores might have slowed their metabolism right down to get the very most out of their meals. Carnivores like Nanuxaurus had no such luck. They would have had to conserve their energy, but they were still forced to head out on the hunt to find enough food to keep them going. Either way, predators like Nanuxaurus found ways to adapt and evolve in the environment rather than fleeing for warmer lands in the wintertime. The Nanuxaurus might have been the king of the Arctic, but it was far from the only predator roaming the land. On the smaller end of the spectrum, the polar trudontids make the Arctic their home. These relatively small bird-like theropod dinosaurs were similar to their southern cousins but just like the Nanuxaurus, evolved to thrive in the frozen tundras up north. One of the most valuable assets the Trudontids of Alaska had is their eyesight. In winter, when the sun sets, the Trudontids' larger eyes were perfect for seeing in the dark. They could spot smaller prey scurrying in the snow and were able to make out where they were going despite the lack of light, avoiding potential dangers but their strongest weapon wasn't their claws or their razor-sharp teeth. It was their intelligence. The Trudontids had one of the highest brain-to-body ratios, meaning they were likely able to outsmart their prey with ease. Their larger brains are thought to have allowed them to take in their surroundings and ready themselves for any threats, as well as solve problems while chasing prey. Just like Nanuxaurus, size sets the polar Trudontids apart from its southern cousins, but in the complete opposite way. Polar Trudontids were considerably larger, coming in at around 4 meters in length, double the size of the 2 meter long Trudontids found in the warmer climates. Their teeth and jaws were more fearsome too, and they could end up weighing double or triple the weight of their cousins. Overall, the average polar trudontid was about 50% bigger than the ones down south. But why bigger? After all, the Nanuxaurus evolved to be smaller to survive the colder climate in the Arctic. Why did polar trudontids do the reverse? There are three theories. The first is because the polar trudontids needed larger eyes to spot its prey in the dark. The rest of its body followed suit. If only the skull grew, they'd obviously have been way out of proportion. The second theory is that the Cretaceous Arctic had a kind of Goldilocks zone when it came to the perfect size for its inhabitants. If you're too big, you won't find enough food to sustain yourself. If you're too small, the cold winds would make you freeze to death. This means that there isn't much variation in the size between all the different dinosaurs roaming the Arctic, be you predator or prey. A third theory is that Trudontids in warmer climates had lots of competition because of larger predators. With less prey up for grabs, they simply didn't have the same opportunity to grow in size. In the Arctic, the polar Trudontids had much more free reign, since the massive predators couldn't keep themselves fed throughout the bleaker months. This allowed them to thrive and keep more food for themselves compared to down south. As formidable and hardy as the Cretaceous Arctic dinosaurs were, none of them could survive the doom that came at the end of their era. It wasn't the freezing cold or the lack of vegetation that wiped out the dinosaurs that roamed Alaska, but the asteroid that struck Earth 66 million years ago, blocking out the sun and causing a mass extinction of dinosaurs.